<laughs> oh man, have we got a good video for you here. Uh, if you are currently using PayPal at your church or maybe thinking about using it for your church's online giving, this is the video to watch. Uh, we dive into everything you need to know about using PayPal for your church, or should I say, should you use PayPal at your church? Wes, I'm kind of upset. Why? I'm upset because churches that use PayPal for online giving are paying way more than they need to pay. Yes, they are. And I assume that's what you wrote a blog post about that we're going to talk yes, about. That's why we do these videos. I do the research, I write the thing, and I sit down and I talk about it with you. That's well, my job. Well, let's talk about it. All right. <laughs> well, the ugly truth about PayPal, just to jump right on in, is that churches pay way too much when they use that platform. It's very expensive, and there are much better options that can save your church a lot of money so that you can apply that toward actual ministry instead of fees. So right off the bat. So you basically just, so if watching right now, you don't have to watch anymore, just don't use PayPal, see you later. Yeah. But if you wanna understand more about why you shouldn't use PayPal, let us proceed and go into the reasons why yes. PayPal is not the best choice for your church giving. So number one, the reason why it's more expensive is labor cost. It won't report to your church management software. Yes. So you have to take the time, whether I say labor cost, you may be, it could be you as a pastor doing this right now, if you're a church plan or a small church, or if your secretary is a volunteer, but they are having to spend more time logging into the PayPal account, extracting the transaction data, and then recording yep. that in whatever church management software you're using, whether it be church track or anything else, doing it manually. And then compound that across multiple church, like uh, multiple online giving platforms. If your church is also using Cash App and, and Venmo. Zelle and Venmo and this and that, having to log into all those different accounts and record all of that into one platform takes a lot of time. Yeah. So that's one way that PayPal is costing your church more than it ought to. But here's the kicker. Here's the biggest one. Okay, I'm ready. Your members cannot cover the processing fees with PayPal. Wait, wait. I thought it, they could. No, they cannot. Wait, Most, no, no, no. Which is hold, wild. Hold on, hold on. I'm which looking. is wild. Because a lot of online like merchant processors give people the option to cover the fee. Yes. So your church will have to pay 100% of those transaction fees, no matter what that looks like for your church. But I have, so you have the statistics. Can you pull these up on the screen? Or is yes. this a thing? Um, because... Uh, I think it was like 55 or 60 percent of the time. If you give donors the option to cover the donation, yes. they will do that. Yes, cover the cost of the transaction fee. So when it's available, donors typically choose to cover the transaction fee 55 to 60 percent of the time, which means that if you're taking donations online through a platform that offers that option, over half of those fees could be covered. If you're using PayPal your church is paying 100% of that fee, no okay. matter what. So all right, I wanna do some math in real time here. Okay. So let's say I've got 30 people at my church that are giving with PayPal. Right. They can't cover those fees, so they're just giving the amount. And let's say the average, I'm gonna shoot real high, but let's say the average donation is $200 a month. So the fees for PayPal, if I'm correct, are like gonna be close to $3 for every one of those credit card mm -hmm. transactions. It's just so, shy, it's it's 2.89% plus 49 cents. Okay, wow, what up, geez. So taking that to account, $3 per donation of fees multiplied by 30 donations a month. So we're looking at $90, give or take, let's just say $100 a month in fees. Sure. So $100 a month in fees, and according to Classy, donors will typically opt to cover those fees if the option is available 55 to 60% of the time. So that means, well, let's say, doing my math, if my math is correct, hold on, $100 a month, so we're looking at $60, could, you, $60 a month that yeah. we're missing out on as a church because yeah. they would have covered the fees, $60 a month times 
12 months. I, that math is hard for me, but that's like what shooting a $700 a that's year, $720 a, a year, $720 a year yes. because PayPal doesn't have this one feature that literally every church giving platform has or should have. And if they don't have it, you shouldn't be using it. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. You could replace your old MacBook with a MacBook air for that amount. I could get like if especially if you're talking like you know maybe a smaller church that needs a new soundboard yeah. you can get a soundboard for that much yeah absolutely I could get some sweet lights for the stage for that much I can get yes I sir. can get a new guitar for that much <laughs> that's just one year of fees just one year of fees <laughs> okay that's that's the biggest reason why PayPal costs churches so much another is that recurring gifts aren't customizable. And what I, what I mean by that, and we'll actually kind of combine this with the next one, which is that donors can't choose where donations go. Okay. So when a donor goes to donate, they're on the they're in the portal, the PayPal donation page. Yeah. Uh, they can designate how much they give. Yeah. And that's it. So they can't say like, I want to give a hundred dollars to my general offerings, and then I want to give fifty dollars to the building fund or something no. like that. They can. They you're just you're just the donor is just giving money to the church. And that's it. That's it. They don't have like a memo field or anything like that? They can't say that I want to give to like the the missionary that was here today or give a love offering or benevolence fund for that, you know, member whose husband just was in a car wreck or something like that or anything specific. They they're can't. just they're just transferring money from their like debit card to the church and the church has to understand what that's for. So yeah. they can't, I mean, typically that's going to be for like tithes and offering because donors can set up recurring giving, but they can only give monthly. They don't have the option of bi-monthly or weekly or any other interval. Now, typically when a recurring donation thing, when a recurring donation option is available to donors, they typically choose to give monthly just yeah. across the board. But there are lots of people that budget weekly, especially if they get a weekly paycheck. Mm -hmm. And they won't have the option to give, like set up recurring donations through PayPal. They'll have to just set up monthly and then budget differently than the, the rest of the way that they budget according yeah. to their paycheck. That's, um, yeah, there's a lot going against them here. Um, so far, yeah. And, and it's funny because <laughs> Matt, I've known all this. Um, because it's part of my job, but also like, it, I guess because I get so involved in so many other areas mm -hmm. of church leadership and discipleship and all these other things that sometimes it's easy to forget something as big as this yes. donations. And that, I mean, we're just the small thing of fees and how much money that can cost a church. Yes. The church doesn't realize that. And churches are turning to PayPal because PayPal is so popular. Yeah. It's one of the largest merchant processors or merchant services in the world. Yeah. Um, I forget how many people they have, but they have tens of millions of users around the world. It's insane. I mean, it's like Venmo. I mean, Venmo's huge. Yeah. So a lot of churches look to PayPal because they know that their members are, are on PayPal and they just naturally think that it would make it easier for the members to adopt an online giving platform if the, those members are already using that service. Yeah. Uh, however, though it's convenient and easy to jump on a widely available and popular platform, it's costing more than what it's worth when there are other options available that could save churches a lot of money. Yes. Um, and, and I see a lot of churches, This we're way off on a tangent, but it's so applicable. A lot of churches that I see are, that are using PayPal are not just using PayPal. Mm -hmm. They're also incorporating things like Venmo and Zelle and Cash App. But this approach, a lot of churches think that this is going to increase their overall giving, right. but in fact, it doesn't. Mm -mm. And sometimes it actually decreases giving because it causes confusion. And then on top of that, we're not, I mean, back to your point number one, where you talked about like how it's hard to get it to automatically report to your software that you use to keep track of all your donations. And so you as a church leader have to pull all these data mm -hmm. things from all these platforms you're using to bring in money yep. and put that into the one software that generates your contribution statements. That's like a train wreck. I don't yes. want to do that. And you're right that it does cause confusion because it's, it kind of, it creates a very confusing message about what you want your donors to do. Yes. If you, if they can give through Zelle and they can give through Venmo and they can give through PayPal and they can give through whatever uh, processor integrates with your CHMS, then they don't know which one you prefer. And of course, as a church leader, you're just wanting 
to give everyone every option so that you can meet all of your members exactly where they are and whatever platform they prefer. Yeah. But it's better to not just get rid of all the noise, have one platform and focus all of your messaging on donations around that one platform. To, so it's better to just reduce the noise and say, you can give in person or you can give on this platform. And we prefer that you give by, let's say like ACH because our fees are lower with that option. Yeah. So that way it's focused. It tells the members exactly what you want them to do. And it's also better because you can then control your fees. You can budget for that better. And if you do the research and pick a, a processor that has the lowest fees, you can save your church a lot of money. Yeah. And, and like, please, like everybody out there, don't misconstrue this whole entire thing because you know, someone looks at this and says, wow, this is a PayPal hate fest. <laughs> this is not a PayPal hate fest. Case in point, I use Cash App. I right. love Cash App. Mm -hmm. I use that to split the bill with friends. I use that to pay a friend back for a ski trip that yeah. we did a few months ago. Um, but is it the best tool for my church? No, absolutely not. No. And I feel like PayPal is the same thing. PayPal is amazing when it comes to like buying things online and stuff. Yes, and we want to have the absolutely. security of it because my goodness, it, it, it's hard to beat the security of PayPal when yes. it comes to buying from people. That's true. But when it comes to church giving, no, it is. It's just not the best solution. It's like trying to dig a ditch with what? What's that little tiny shovel you talk about all like the time? Like a little trowel or something? Yeah, because yeah. this guy likes to plant all the things, and so like he's a like spade. Every Monday we come in after the weekend. I'm like, what'd you do? And he's like, I planted things, and it, it cracks me up. But but my wife went to the store and bought a bunch of plants, Wes. <laughs> that's what we do every weekend. <laughs> but but that's what how I feel about it is like I feel like a lot of churches when they're trying to utilize a tool like PayPal to do something as intricate and very specific of online giving, they're just using the wrong tool for the wrong job. Yeah. And I don't want to try to dig a huge ditch with a little trowel. I want to have a big old backhoe to be able to yes. get that done in a few minutes. So. Yes, absolutely. And it also, it's, it's for something so crucial as donations. Yes. Because for better or worse, money makes the world go around and money is how we afford to do the things that is important to the, the kingdom of Christ. It is. Now, we're not gonna leave you hanging here because we have some other good videos that are gonna really help you because you may be watching this and trying to figure out the best giving platform for your church. Just as a little spoiler alert, here at Church Track, we make no money on online giving. Mm -hmm. We integrate with Stripe because Stripe is the merchant processor that works through the integration we have in our church management software, but we actually made no money on it. Yeah, which We don't I, add any additional fees of our own on top of Stripe's fees. Yes, and, and so we have no dog in this fight if if you will. Um, but we did this really cool webinar. I think it was like last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah we talked yeah. about like the best giving platform and we actually looked at like all the types of giving platforms. And we also looked at the online giving fees and what those mean. And, and we, that was probably my most favorite like live stream we ever did where we just kind of dove into all that. Yeah. That so, was fun. It was yeah, a good one. Yeah. I think people really enjoyed it too. I mean, and doing math in real time was a little bit frightening for me because <laughs> it's risky. <laughs> it's risky. <laughs> Uh, but that, that's definitely a good one that you should totally check out. Um, and we also have another great video, since I'm plugging videos here at this point. Go ahead. Um, but we talked about using multiple giving platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good one because we kind of just talk about why multiple giving platforms doesn't always equal more giving. And in fact, it typically equals more frustration, more confusion, and sometimes less giving. So that's mm -hmm. a good one. Man, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. It's a, I mean, we, uh, this is a, a very, uh, how do I word this, Matt? This was very different from the kind of stuff we usually do. Yeah, more or less, but this is, this is good. I think we're gonna do this more often. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Woo, well, that was a fun one. Uh, if you liked that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button or the like button. I guess the like button if you liked it and if you wanna hear more about all the things we talk about, because we talk about so much here at Church Track when we're not making church software for churches to be able to equip their church to build the body of Christ. We're creating content like this. Um, be sure to check out that other video we mentioned earlier, uh, the best online giving platform. That is such a great resource. That was a live stream we did a while back where we dive into giving platforms and how to choose the right one for your ministry. It's definitely worth the watch. See you soon, bye.